hey there in this video we'll be discussing about the two kinds of rendering in Next.js SSG a static site generation and SSR or server side rendering now I know these topics have been extensively discussed in other YouTube videos so in this video my main goal will be to add more value for you guys where I'll help you understand when and why you should be using a certain kind of rendering for your Next.js pages so without any further ado let's get straight into it Let's start with static generation in Next.js first. Here I've summarized everything that you need to know about it. So static generation is very similar to hosting a simple HTML page at a route. Now creating a page at a certain route in Next.js is really simple and we'll see an example of it if you don't know about it already in just a minute. Now Next.js tries to pre-render everything as much as possible instead of relying on client-side JavaScript. And this line here just mentions that particular thing that Next.js generates HTML for each page instead of having it all done by client-side JavaScript or React. Now as you most of you already have worked with React and what you were doing there was client-side rendering. So most of the dynamic data was generated on the client-side in the browser. Now the static generation is done by Next.js using next build command. So when you run this command, you'll notice that your page has been generated and the same page will be displayed whenever you access the page route. Now Next.js, even in the documentation, you'll see this line that static generation is recommended over SSR due to performance reason. And this is because static pages are lightweight and are easier to load. And also load time can be further improved by caching your pages by a CDN. And since all of your content is already generated, it is also better for SEO or search engine optimization. Now you can also call APIs and HTML data can be fetched during build time using get static props method. We'll discuss about this method more when we see an example. So let's see a very first example of a static page in Next.js. So obviously the code that you will be writing will be in React. To create a new page in Next.js for a given route, all we need to do is create a new file under the pages section. So I've named this file static.js and I'm exporting a functional component called static from this particular page. And this is all I need to do to create a new page in Next.js. And if you see this page is doing nothing but just returning a div element with a certain message. Now, since this functional component is really simple and is not dependent on any API or client side rendering, this will be statically generated by Next.js. And to do that, all I will do is run the next build command. And the next build command is present under the build script for my project. So I'll just say npm run build. And what it will do is run the next build command for me. Now, if you'll notice, it says that it's creating an optimized production build. And in a few seconds, you'll notice that it has generated the static page route for you. This particular sign means that it was automatically rendered as static HTML. And here in our project, you'll notice that there is a new folder called dot next. And under this, there'll be a folder called static where you can find your pages. Now let's go ahead and actually start our application by using next start, which is present under the start script. So I'll just say npm start and it will start my next year's project. As of now, on the root route, there is just a static generated page which says home page. But what we are interested in more is the static page that we just created by the name static. So you can see that under the static route, you're seeing a simple HTML page. Now this page was generated during the build time and every time you request for this particular route, this HTML page will be sent back to you without any client side rendering. Now the pages that are a good candidate for being statically generated during build time are for example the about section of your application the contact section the faq ideally any kind of blog or documentation should be statically generated because those kind of pages are rarely updated and the content there is just simple text and it's likely not to be dynamic but we do want to improve a static example next by using get static props method where we will be calling an API for a static page during the build time so that we can fetch more data and render it here. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we want to do here is to cover an example where a static page content depends on external data. And for that Next.js allows us to export an async function called get static props. And for that all we need to do is in our component 
add an export for get static props function and within it we'll be calling our api endpoint i'm using this particular api endpoint as of now and it's completely up to you guys to consume whatever api you want i'm just taking this as an example here so let's go ahead and add this export async get static props in our application so here i'll just copy paste this and then call my api endpoint using fetch so here i'm done fetching the result from the api and as a next step what i want to do is pass the data that i just fetched to the pages props during pre render and remember all of this is happening during the build time so your api will be called during the build time the data will be fetched and added to your statically generated html so this api call will never be happening on your client side it will just happen once during your build time and the data will be accessible on the ui through your statically generated page so the actual data was within a data key in the api response so in our return statement we will say that users is result dot data now we're done returning the response as props and these can be consumed by our component here we'll access them using the same name and with the user list inside our component let's just generate an unordered list which is displaying all the email ids which are returned in the response i'm done with all the changes now i can run next build to generate the static page during the build time there was an error and it was because we used the wrong name here let's just fix this run our build again okay this time next build was successful and now we can start a server using npm start let's go ahead and hit the same static route again and as you can see this time it contains the email ids that we fetched during the build time and then we pass this data as props and this entire thing was then in the end generated as a static html page so far we saw how you can create static web pages in nextjs and how to call an api and pass the results as a prop using get static props function to your component which in the end will generate the static html now let's talk about the drawbacks of static html pages static html pages have been around since the beginning of the web and they don't offer much interactivity and dynamic capability of changing the ui as per the user choice so the drawbacks obviously are if your page is highly interactive and the data is dynamic and will change frequently with time then you cannot go ahead with static generation so to solve that you have two options the first one is obviously use static generation with client side rendering which is basically just how you were using react normally so all you have to do is create a new page in xjs and for example in this page called client side we are fetching the information using the use effect hook for this functional component which is fetching the api data and then updating the state once the component has mounted in the dom so all the dynamic activity is happening once the component has already been created or has already been painted on the dom in this case your seo will obviously be low now the second feature that nextjs offers exclusively and that we want to discuss is server side rendering a server side rendering pre renders a page on every request and this line is very important because whenever you request a server side rendered page it will create the html every single time so obviously this method is very slow and should only be used unless there is no other option for you to go ahead with so let's quickly go over the points for server side rendering the html page as i said is generated on each request used only when your data is frequently updated if this is not the case you should probably not be using it it needs a mandatory get server side props function like the one we used in static generation where we were using get static props similarly in this case there is a function that needs to be exported called get server side props this is obviously slower much slower than static site generation and you should have as few as possible ssr pages in your next js application so next up let's go ahead and see an example of a server side rendered page in next js and how you can create one and for our server side rendered example here on vs code 
I've created an exact copy of our page which was being statically generated so we can compare them side by side. So as you can see here, the code is exactly the same but the only difference that I've made here is instead of exporting a get static prop function, I'm exporting a get server side prop function. And as I said before, this is a mandatory function to be exported from every server side rendered page. And since this function will be running every time we request this particular page, I've also added a console log here, which will be executed every time in the backend console so that we can see the API call was being made on every request for this particular page. So let's go ahead and build our application using npm run build. And you'll notice that this time there is a new page generated and you see this little lambda sign next to it, which translates to that this particular page is server side rendered at runtime. And it's using either get initial props or get server side props. Now, as far as I remember, get initial props is deprecated and was being used by the older version of Next.js. So I recommend using get server side props itself. And since our application is now built, we can start a production like server by using npm start. Let's go ahead and do that. And then in the browser, we'll be trying to request the server rendered page. And as you can see, it looks exactly like the static page. But if you carefully notice here in the logs, you can see the log API call made successfully. And this will come up every time I request for the page. So you can see every time I hit refresh, another log is added to the console. The same will not be true for your statically rendered page. So let me open that again. And when I do it, there's nothing coming on the console, even though in the static page, I had added the console log too. So this was proof enough that every time you request for a server side rendered page, Next.js will, will execute this particular server side props function, pass the results as props, and then generate this HTML every single time. Now creating a server side rendered page gives you an added benefit of being able to look at live changes that are being made in the backend. So let's say for this API, there were a few new users added. You will be able to see those new users in your server side rendered page, but that won't be true for the statically generated page because the API was only called once in the beginning during build time. So this was all I had to discuss for this particular video. I hope it really helped you in understanding when you should be using statically generated or server side rendered page. Now I also know that we discussed some functions like get server side props and get static props. I will be discussing all of them in detail in another video. So stay tuned to the channel for that. And I hope you guys like this particular video. And for more such content, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I'll see you guys in the next one.